So my name is Anna Chen, and I'm going to be talking about um, SSL and TLS today. Um, SSL stands for so Secure Sockets Layer, and is my mouse in the way? Crap. Um, and TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. Um, now, these are just a process of um, communication handshakes between a client and a server using asymmetric encryption to establish a secure communication session. Um, this ensures three major things. Um, first of all, privacy. So for example, if you guys are the bank, and, I, and my name is Anna, and um, Karen, can I just have you for a moment as a demonstrator? So let's just, OK, so Karen is my hacker neighbor next door who somehow got into got past the AES encryption on my modem and is snooping on my network, right? So I'm sending data to you guys, the bank. And um, Karen will not be able to read that data because SSL and TLS will ensure that the data will remain private. And also, like, um, just to make sure that I am actually Anna and who I think I'm talking to is actually the bank, um, SSL and TLS will also ensure that the communicating parties are authenticated and are who they claim to be. The other thing it ensures is data integrity, so that, for example, if Karen is snooping on my traffic, traffic, sorry, um, she will not be able to just replace my message with something that she made up and send it to the bank, and vice versa. Um, so SSL and TLS are extremely similar to each other, which is why I'm doing a presentation on both of them combined. Um, they are still different. They're still slightly different. Um, TLS is technically the successor of SSL. SSL, as of 2017, to my knowledge, is actually no longer secure because of an exploit called Poodle, and I'm not referencing the dog. Um, the main difference between SSL and TLS is that SSL will explicitly specify a specific port that's secure to use, like, for example, 443. TLS will not. It will connect insecurely at first, and then it will basically implicitly initiate the handshake for a secure connection. Um, this, is at, this is advantageous because um, if you have data coming from a port that's designate, designated as secure and someone is snooping and watching like that port, that's like a flag. Hey, I'm sending important information. Snoop for it. <laughs> Whereas if you connect normally at first, you're not giving them any signal. Um, and there are two essential technologies that enable uh, SSL and TLS to work. The first is certificate authorities, and the second is asymmetric encryption. Um, certificate authorities are basically just a trusted third party entity of some sort that issues digital signatures. These usually include the version of the certificate, the serial of that certificate, um, the signature, and the issuer name. The key information that's actually relevant to the handshake process um, used in SSL and TLS is um, the validity period, so you know you have a valid certificate and it's still working. Um, the subject name, so for example, if, I'm, if you're the bank and you give me a certificate, that certificate has to say the name of your bank and the public key information that your organization is using. Um, there's some other optional information like um, issue a unique ID, subject unique ID, blah, 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 blah. And um, you can actually find, you can actually like check on your browser settings, go to FS, go to um, manage certificates, and you can see a list of what certificates your browser already know if you guys want to. Um, and the other essential technology that lets SSL and TLS work is asymmetric encryption. Um, what this is, this actually has a li like a little bit of a history. Like prior to the 1970s, everybody was using only symmetric encryption. And then in, in the 1970s, people started playing around to see, hey, how can we encrypt things but let everybody have a key so that they can do part of the encryption process, but maybe not the other part. So um, a mathematician and cryptographer by the name of Malcolm Williamson developed a uh, public key encryption method in 1974, but this was kept classified. Um, but then Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman independently like, came up with um, a method as well and released it to the public. And then everybody started using it for secure com communications. Um, and the, there's a, the difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption is that prior to the 1970s, everybody doing encryption of any sort had to have a key. And this key is the same for encrypting and decrypting. And both parties communicating need to have access to this key. So for example, if I have a box and I want to, and I want to put a message into it and lock it and give it to my bank, I also have to send the key along. So if Karen is intercepting my box with the message inside the box, she can also intercept my key. 
this is incredibly insecure. And an example algorithm is row 13, where, for example, if I want to transmit A, B, C, D, E, row 13 will shift by 13 letters, and my message becomes NOPQR, and then backwards for decryption, just back to A, B, C, D, E. And yeah, you would need to tell them I'm shifting by 13 letters, something like that. Um, asymmetric encryption, on the other hand, is, a, is using a separate key for encryption and a separate key for decryption. Um, example encryption me methods that are really, really well known and widely used are the Diffie-Hellman key exchange by Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman, and the RSA encryption algorithm, which came out exactly a year after that came out, pretty much, roughly. Um, and how this works is that both keys are mathematically related. Um, what I have demonstrated up here is like a simplistic representation of the RSA algorithm. Um, I won't have time for the Diffie-Hellman one, I'm sorry. Um, so the public key generally consists of n, which is the product of two very large and distinct um, prime numbers. They have to be prime. You don't want them to not be prime. Um, e is the other number that you need, which is also another very large prime number. Um, and then using these, using, and then using P, Q, and E, um, they then generate the uh, private QD, which uses modular mathematics. Um, so it's like the product of E and D, which you kind of have to solve for, equals 1 mod M. M is the product of P minus 1 and Q minus 1. And you can give anybody and any, anyone at all, but as long as you keep P, Q, and D private, we, I can guarantee you that they won't have the computational power to solve for D, or P, or Q. Um, eventually, this might change one day, but I'm not going to get to that. Um, and how this works is, so for example, if you have um, plain text X and cipher text Y, and you want to encrypt plain text X, you will basically put it through this operation, which uses very simple modular arithmetic. And then to decrypt, you actually do the same thing, except you replace E with D. Um, and as I mentioned before, because we don't have the computational power to factorize N for P and Q, which are needed to generate D, you can't decrypt unless you know what D is already. Um, so the actual handshake process using these usually start with a client's request to communicate securely. So for example, if you guys are a bank, I'm going to first insecurely ask, hey, um, can we do a secure connection of some sort? And I will give you a list of compatible cipher suites or methods um, that we can use together. And then next up, you guys will, the bank, pick a um, server suite and send me your certificate, which guarantees that it's not Karen pretending to be my bank. Um, and you might also ask me, uh, depending on configuration and what cipher suite specifically for my client's certificate. Um, for example, Diffie-Hellman actually requires two sets of private and public keys, whereas RSA requires one set. Um, and after that, I verify the server's certificate. I make sure, OK, I'm actually talking to the bank, not Karen, <laughs> my neighbor. Um, and then I will send back a message with a secret symmetric key that I want to use for later communication, encrypt it with the public key written on the certificate. Um, after that, if I was asked in step two for my certificate, I will send it. I will send it back here. If not, I'll just say no certificate. But if I was asked and I say those and I don't send back a certificate, then handshake fails. But assuming it works, then you guys, the bank server, will verify that. I'm who I am if I had to send one. Oh, and after that's been verified, then both sides sort of like send a finished message encrypted in that secret symmetric key. And everything else that you do, whether you're like withdrawing money or depositing or whatever, that will be done using symmetric encryption. And yeah, that's it. And this is basically the RSA process. If you want to learn about the Diffie-Hellman process, you can go to this link here, which is at math.uzla.edu. Um, I, yeah, I'll just leave that there if you want to like take a picture and, and look. There's also more on the RSA and digital certificates if you want to see like more information and the handshake process. All right, thank you very much.